Hi everyone. So I am back with block five for the Riley Blake block challenge. So block flat, oh, if I could talk, block five is this ocean waves block. So what is the Riley Blake block challenge? So every Tuesday, except the last Tuesday of the month, a free block is posted onto the Riley Blake website. So you can go on, print off the tutorial for free and make a block. It's pretty awesome because they show on the website all the fabric requirements so you could make the block look the blocks all look exactly like the color scheme show or you could use your own fabric i chose to just use some of my own fabric most of it is from the folktail line so that is the challenge and here are the blocks i have so far this is block four three two and this was the first block so I am going to jump in and show you what I am using for this fifth block. And this video is going to be a little bit different. So stay tuned and I'll show you about that. Okay, so this time I was asked in the comments if I could slow down a little bit instead of fast forward through the video and kind of show me working through the block in real time. So um, this time I'm gonna kind of go and talk you through what I'm doing and in making the block. This one is a little bit easier, um, but this video is gonna be longer than these videos I've done for the block challenge normally are. I usually just wanna show what my block looks like and just uh, make it a relaxing video with everything sped up and just kind of some nice music played over it. But if you'd prefer more of a walkthrough, just let me know which video you like better in the comments. So um, I am going to go ahead and iron this fabric really quick. I'm using this cream for the La Cream post um, shown there. Um, I'm using the Cape Verde as this one. I don't have a darker blue, so I'm just subbing this in. I think that with the ocean waves, it kind of look nice and mimic like the shore there. Um, and then this one is going to be in place of lodge pole. So that's kind of where the coloring is going to go. So I'm gonna iron these really quick and then I'll um, walk through cutting them. Okay, so I have the cream fabric here. I'm just realizing I have a lot of stuff in the way. Okay, so I have the cream fabric here and, and according to the um, instructions here, we're going to cut six three and a half inch squares. So I'm just going to smooth out my fabric and cut across here. And your first cut, you kind of want to square off the fabric. So make sure you have the right side of the ruler. I can't tell you how many times I have cut, um, <laughs> counting from this side over to the three. And you know what? It's not three and a half inches from that way. So it never works out when you do it wrong. So we're going to cut um, six of these. And um, I'm just going to slide this fabric out of the way and cut here because I'm not sure. I don't think I'll quite get six, but you never know. So one, two, three. I think I'll get five. So close. Ooh, no, I'm not gonna take that because it's a little off there. So, so I need two more. So normally when I am up here and if I'm doing one of these where I'm just going to um, speed it up, I usually listen to podcasts um, and when I'm not recording, I usually listen to podcasts up here. A lot of time I listen to true crime podcasts, and I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but I really love true crime. But um, yesterday I heard a new podcast advertised that wasn't true crime that sounded really interesting. So I went and listened to that, and it was so good. And... 
it was the podcast is called against the odds and um maybe you remember but a couple years ago maybe only two years ago in thailand this young boys soccer team got trapped in a cave and they were in there for days and days and days so long and this whole podcast was about this that rescue and i remember seeing that on the news and just um thinking how unbelievably awful that had to be for those parents um i can't even imagine my kids being trapped in a situation like that and it was just remarkable to listen to because you know i remember following it a lot on the news and some of the stuff that they did to save those boys but just hearing all of the details was pretty incredible so it was against the odds if you like podcasts i highly re recommend listening to it because it was very inspiring so with this one lodgepole we're also cutting six three and a half inch squares so the same thing but just the strength of those young boys it was really interesting to listen to the first divers that got back there to him because they were i think it was like six miles back that they were in the cave and the first divers to get to them we're just talking about how calm the boys were and um you know i just feel like sometimes when you're in situations like that sometimes you're given the right people to surround you and they talked about the the assistant coach and and his life and how he gave the boys different tasks and different things to do to keep them calm so I think they were definitely given the right person to be with them in such a bad situation, but it was really inspiring. But the first divers that got in there were talking about how calm the boys were and how, you know, they had to tell them they couldn't bring them with them right then, that they had to bring people back to help. And the boys were just, you know, very understanding and just thanking them, even though they weren't saved right then, they were just thanking them. And I was like, oh, that young and having that kind of strength is just impressive but that was whew, it was a really good listen i think it was probably four episodes and they're still gonna do another one talking to someone i don't remember who it was but that one's not posted yet so i have five cuts so i need one more and then we will move on to the last color and there's just a few cut from that one so if you have podcasts that you like to listen to or recommendations let me know because that's what I like to do when I'm up here I do listen to audiobooks too and one of my favorites is really they're older books um but I find them very very humorous is um Miss Polyfax. It's about a, um, a an older woman who's widowed who um, tries to go join the, I think it was the CIA, to be a spy for them. And she's just, I think she's just hilarious and I love her personality. And they're funny mystery books. I find them quite enjoyable. So, Every now and then when I want to mix it up, I will listen to some of those because they're very fun. Very, very fun books. Um, okay, so this one we are cutting two three and a half inch squares and two three inch squares. So this is a really different style for me in filming. And I don't want to give you guys a bunch of dead air, so I feel kind of bad if I'm just not doing anything maybe I'll just put some sound I'm gonna cut at three and a half inches and then cut them down when I after I cut two so I'll do this strip cut my two three and a half inches and then cut it down See. These kind of prints, I don't want them to 
be slanted, but sometimes I feel like trying to um, get them to be perfectly straight is just not worth the hassle sometimes. <laughs> Meaning the pattern being like sideways. So I think these finished squares are all gonna be at three inches. So I will say if you're not comfortable with perfect quarter inch seams when you're doing this next step, then you may want to cut your three and a half squares a little bit bigger and trim them down because I think with the cuts that we have, they're going to need to be perfect. So our three and our three inch squares we're going to set aside and the first thing we're going to do is make our um, half square triangles by marking the middle of these squares. So you're going to have your um, lodge pole matched with the Cape Verde for two. And then the rest of these, I think, are all going to have the cream. I think. Nope, two. So one of these is going to also have a cream. So only one is going to have the lodge pole and the Cape Verde. And then one Cape Verde is going to have a cream. And then the rest of these lodge poles are all gonna have a cream on them. So I need to get that sorted in my brain before I move forward. <laughs> okay, so hopefully I didn't mess anybody up. So these three inch ones we're gonna set aside. These we're gonna mark corner to corner. And then we're gonna sew, sew a quarter inch seam along each side. So let me give myself some room and grab a marking pen. So I found these came in the sew sampler. They're the Clover Water Soluble. I heard a lot of people say that they don't mark off very well, um, but I am going to go ahead and use them here because I'm going to be cutting down that seam. So I don't think it's going to matter too much for me if they don't rub off that easy or wash off that easy. So, and I feel like they mark very nicely, like a nice clean mark across there. So I'm gonna keep these paired together and mark. I'm gonna press this really quick because I don't want that seam to mess, get messed up because that's curled up because I don't have any wiggle room here. So, I don't know, I think they mark really well, but I heard that if you heat on them, that they can mess up. And if you heat them before cleaning them off, that it basically sets it and they don't wash off. Um, but I have not used them where I need to mark them, like be able to wash them off yet. I've just used them for doing things like this for half square triangles. So. I can't speak for how well they clean yet. So like I said, after I mark all these, we're gonna go and sew a quarter inch seam along each side of that line. And then we'll just cut down the line and press them open. This is gonna be, I think, a really easy block, which is kind of nice because the last one was pretty tricky. So put this away. So I'm gonna meet you guys at the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam on either side. I like to just chain piece these. So I just line it up and keep going through all of them along one side. And then I'll turn them all, keep them piece like chained together and do the other side. Um, I find it makes go a little bit faster. And you don't necessarily have to do the line down the middle. There's like different marking tapes and tricks for doing half square triangles without having to take the time to mark down the middle. Um, I just, it's like one of those things where if you've always done it and you hear about a new way, sometimes you 
find the way that you've always been doing a little bit more muscle memory and you don't want to change maybe I don't know I'm just maybe stubborn I don't know I tried the duck duck go tape and I got it in the Missouri Star Quilt Company um, uh, 25 days of Christmas box and I used it and I I thought it was it worked fine I feel like for me this I don't have to think about very much with the mark down the middle with the duck duck go tape like everything turned out fine I don't want to say that like it didn't make a nice half square triangle because it did I just feel like there was a lot more that I had to do to make sure that it stayed accurate like I had to watch a different place so it wasn't as as easy as this for me because I'm just so used to doing it this way so um, that's all that was a lot of story that <laughs> maybe didn't need to be explanation that wasn't all that necessary so like I said I just keep these um, chain together and just go down the other side and I sometimes I forget and let the tail drag and if you feel like your sewing machine is kind of going slower than normal or like the way it feels like it's kind of weighted it's probably because you have you have a lot of these dragging it's just that weight pull them up and keep going So I guess this would be a good way to kind of see how long the block takes because it's a good thing this wasn't the last one where I'm trying a video like this where I show everything in real time because that other one probably took me forever. The one from last week. Goodness, that was a lot. It's a very pretty block, but definitely took a bit longer. So I'm going to cut these all apart and not my finger because I almost did. And then we're going to just cut down the line down the middle of the block and press them open and we'll check. Um, before I press them open, I'll probably use my clearly um, slotted trimmer. I think that's what it's called and check the sizing first um, before pressing them open so let's go over to the cutting table okay so I'm going to cut all these in half and they should be I think three inches okay so I grabbed the wrong trimmer so sorry I got my half inch one so we're going to cut down the center I may need to put a new rotary blade in soon. And I'm just gonna make sure they are at three inches. And I may just trim them all anyway because then I can cut off the dog ears and have my little three inch blocks. So they should match perfectly once pressed open with those that we already did so trimming them uh, I can tell you that when I first started quilting and that was when I was a teenager actually I didn't take the steps to do any of this stuff um, I didn't trim my blocks and make sure they're right the right size I didn't press I didn't <laughs> I didn't do anything but cut and sew because that's what I like doing. I just liked cutting the pieces and sewing them together. I didn't like pressing. I didn't like doing any of that stuff. So I just didn't do it. And I'll tell you one thing, my quilts were pretty, but they definitely weren't perfect. And as I got older and learned why my stuff didn't meet up perfectly. I started putting in that effort to do all this simple but tedious stuff to make 
my quilts look a little bit better. And you know, I still don't do everything the way, perfectly the way maybe you should, or I don't like to use the word should because it's a craft, right? So you do things your own way and you have your own touch to it, but I still don't do everything, you know, maybe the way a lot of people do, but I'm definitely improved a lot on doing these tedious parts. <laughs> and I'm telling you, if you don't do them, that's fine too. Just have fun making your quilt. That's what I'll say. Because I still have a lot of my quilts that I didn't do all this type of trimming on or press all the seams one way or the other. And they still are pretty, they still work, and they still keep us warm when needed. I forgot one. <laughs> it's over to the side. Ah, sometimes I wonder what my mind is doing. So I know I've mentioned before, but I homeschool my two kids they are 11 and 13. My son is 11 and he um, is about to turn 12 in eight days exactly. And my daughter just turned 13. And so that is where my mind always is. Because usually when I come up here and start doing the stuff, it's after we've done school. And I have to tell you, my kids are doing pre-algebra for math right now. And that's where most of my, the extent of what my mind and memory can do goes to relearning all that math to be able to teach it to them. Because usually after I get up in the morning, I go for a walk with my dog. And if you follow me on Instagram, I started doing the Couch to 5K program. So me and him go and do a little walk, jog, doing that program. And then I come back and I will start reading what they need to do for math and basically learn that in the morning to teach it to them. So by the time sometimes I get up here, my mind is like, I just, I can't do all the numbers on this. That's why I really enjoy having these blocks that are free to do because I don't have to do the math to figure out the block. It is already done for me. But this morning we, I did school with the kids and they had dentist appointments. So we had a full day today, full day. So have all those trimmed. So we're gonna press them open and then we are going to do the layout for our block. Okay, so I'm gonna press these open and a lot of the times I try to press open where the seam folds to the darker fabric. That doesn't always work out, but later we'll have to press them all to one side or the other when they're into rows so that we can nest them. So I'm just going to stack these so that each one that like is the same, has the same color scheme. Let me see if I can get that crease out. Is together, it'll just make it easier for doing the layout later. So yeah, when I was a teenager, I never would do this part. I would have just sewed these, these blocks together. And I don't know why I keep hitting them. So this is another part that I consider the tedious part, but I will say for some reason, the older I get, the less tedious this seems. It's just kind of relaxing, especially when I'm listening to an audiobook up here or, um, or a podcast that I like. It just makes, it's the only thing I'll say is it makes the day fly by. I wonder where all of 
the day when. <laughs> well, afternoon maybe because the first part of my day is all school and all that. Okay, so now these are going to go over on this corner here. I can see. Make sure I'm in the camera. And that will be over there. And then we're just going to build out with these to make it look like we have waves coming in. Make sure I'm doing it right. So we'll have one, two, three, four. So that should be the last one there. And then we'll have these. Hopefully this is all in the picture. <laughs> Need to keep checking the time because I have to take my daughter to her soccer practice uh, we need to leave around 4.30, so hopefully I can get this finished before then, but there is the layout, and what I like to do is I will chain piece this, these two rows together, so meaning I'll fold that over, so fold that over, so fold that over, so fold that over, so chain piecing, and then I'll go ahead and do this row too and chain piece it, and then I'll sew the middle together, chain piecing it. Um, so then quickly I'll have these four rows and then I'll bring them and press them and I'll follow along the diagram showing which way to press the seams and then piece the rows together. So let's go sew this together. Okay, so I meant to because when I sit to sew, I usually keep this somewhere over here so I can make sure I um, keep everything lined up the way it's supposed to be. Because nobody wants to have to rip seams. So again, um, this way of doing it, just kind of what works for me. If you'd rather do one at a time, definitely do that. Cause it's, um, I feel like it's really hard adjusting to someone else's way of doing things. If it's not a way that you've always done things. So um, I would say that like, especially the way I piece so many together or chain piece so many together at one time, it's definitely really easy to get stuff mixed up much easier to do that, doing it this way. If you saw my American glory quilt block, the last one, I think it was month three. Um, if you notice on it, I have some of the little tiny blocks in the diamond in the wrong position. It's the darker blue blocks that stands out a lot in it. Um, that's because of <laughs> how I choose to piece these things together. Now, I went ahead and left it in that block because I'm like, nobody um, who hasn't seen the pattern for that is probably going to notice. And it honestly doesn't bother me. If I showed my husband that um, that those are off, it would bother him because he has a completely different personality than I do. But for me, I'm like, it won't, it won't bother me. I'm going to leave it. It's not worth it to me to rip it out. Um, so what I do here <laughs> is I know that there's four rows in each block, so I'll cut off four at a time and move the start one over hope this makes sense because I don't think it's in this in the screen so I'll keep a row of four still chained together 
cut those off. And then my first four are here. Hopefully you can see it. And then I just press them lightly open to make sure that they're in the right order still. Meaning that I haven't flipped it the other way. That solid block that's not a half square triangle is in the corner. Then I know I have everything lined up. And what this does when I keep these chained is it, it kind of keeps them all together. So when I sew that middle together, it just makes it so much easier to keep everything in place. So I'm going to fold those over onto each other and just bring this whole net of stuff up to the sewing machine. Uh, this could, I mean, honestly, maybe this isn't easier. I don't know. To me it is because I feel like I can get it done so much faster, but maybe, maybe I'm causing more work for myself. I don't know. In my head, it makes it faster. <laughs> or I'm making it easier to mess up. I don't know. Like I said, if you look at that American Glory block, it's in the wrong position because I try to piece everything together really fast. But you know, I have, this is for fun for me. I just enjoy doing it. This stuff I have a really, a lot of stuff where I'm running around in the morning doing different things. Um, and then in the evening I have a lot of the kids activities for sports so this is my time okay let's make sure <laughs> this one kind of got all make sure that that folds over see what I mean just keep, gotta keep an eye on it and make sure they don't get twisted And so let me show you how this looks. And this is the reason why I like doing it. This like where it makes kind of like a net where they're all together and hopefully in the right place. So I'm going to take this over and press it, um, pressing the seams in the directions suggested so that they'll all nest together. So let's go do that. Okay, so I am going to press the top row toward me. Um, let me see. Actually, I'm going to press the top row away from me. And these seams like this, those are hard to get to press in the direction that they don't naturally want to go. So you just gotta coax those down. Okay, and then so the next row, I don't wanna leave that sitting down because I have burned my, <laughs> my mat before. So the next row, we're gonna press toward me And then I'll flip it over and give the seams a good press after I'm done doing this side. And you probably saw I didn't use any pins yet, but here I will use pins at the corners. And I'll do my best to pull them out before I sew over them. I don't always do that. And it's not a good thing, but... It's just one of those things I forget about. And I shouldn't because I don't want to kill my machine, but I should have seen because I should have seen if this um, marking pins would have came out with water before I cut them, just so I know. One more row. So these are toward me again. 
and I'm trying not to tug on this too much and stretch the fabric, but sometimes it's kind of hard for me not to do that because I naturally want to pull it to get stuff to lay down like it should, but I really don't want to pull too much and stretch the fabric, make your blocks not fit together. And okay, so I'm looking good. One last press here. And so what I do, because these are still, all oh, this wool from my mat keeps getting on all my fabric. I need to, I need to put some fabric over my mat so I don't have such a mess on my fabric after. So I'm gonna put a pin on at these seams. You saw I did the first two rows. And I'm just gonna nest my seams together so that I'll get, hopefully, get nice little corners here. So I have those. And then I'm gonna flip the bottom up to the third row and go ahead and pin those because I'll just do these quickly together and then just have to meet the middles after and then press one last time and this should be done. And goodness, I'll have a little bit of time to spare before I need to take my daughter to soccer. I don't like the way that's laying. That's good. Okay, so let's go sew that. Okay. Let's get this sewn. And I did it. I said I wasn't going to, and I did it. I sewed over one of the needles. is finished and I'm just gonna let it hang out wherever it wants to hang out I'm not gonna try to press it open yet because those seams that I just sewed there don't affect the side at all I'll just go press it all at once sitting here looking at my machine and I'm like I know I just cleaned it but it is so dusty in there because um I really love this um the channel so the distance I know I've talked about them before the channel before but Chris has a um I think it's like a getting organized cleaning challenge that she's doing right now and the first one was going over she showed how she cleans her machine and um, that was like the first challenge was cleaning the machine and getting familiar with it. You know, like all the different things you can do on your machine, the, um, stitches and all that stuff. And so I, excuse me, I cleaned my machine really good and it just, every time I see it, I'm like, that's just must be how much I sew <laughs> that it's always so dusty. Cause I, I oiled it. I did all that good stuff when I saw her suggestion and it looks like I never clean it all the time. Maybe it's just partly Texas too is so dusty because I dust the house weekly and it just stays dusty too. So. There we go. I'm gonna go press it and we'll take a final look at it. Okay, so the block is pretty much done. We just need to do our final pressing. And it looks like 
the, um, let me see. So it suggests to press them all in one direction. Thought that's what it said, but I wanted to make sure. So this block was a lot of fun for me because I needed one that wasn't so challenging. The American Glory quilt block for this month was very challenging. And the last one for this challenge was very challenging. So it's nice having one that came together so nicely. Very easy to do. This is a good beginner block for sure. I like the colors too that I chose. What do you think? This was a fun block. So let me know in the comments um, if you liked this style of video better where I walk through completely on the blocks or if you prefer the one that's just more of a watch the piecing happening and have it sped up for a quick video with some music in the background. Um, I'm open to suggestions on that, on which one you prefer. So let me know in the comments and I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope if you're doing this challenge, you're enjoying it too. And until next time, you guys take care. I'll see you. Bye.